Geronimo Stilton, The Kingdom of Fantasy, Part 13. Within minutes, the trolls had us surrounded. Their mighty drums sounded. A few of the trolls began to dance. Then, Boils began shouting again. Make way for the Lady of Darkness, the Empress of Evil, the Sorceress of Sorrow, the... A cold voice interrupted him. Enough! it cried. It was Cackle, the Queen of the Witches, and all of her witch followers. Cackle sniffed the air. I smell a rat, she screeched. Uh oh. W was I really that stinky? She spotted me in an instant. Ah, <laughs> so there you are, rodent knight, she cackled. So you're out to save Old Blossom, the queen of the fairies, are you? Well, that won't be easy once I turn all of you into cockroaches. <gasps> Cheese niblets, I I I'm afraid of bugs. I stared up at the sky, trying to think of a way to escape. It was almost dawn. Suddenly, I remembered something. Just like monsters, vampires, and ghouls, witches and trolls hate the daylight. The rising sun would drive them all away. All I had to do was keep cackle talking until morning. Uh, so, uh, Queen, I was wondering, how do you like being a witch? Uh, do you know any nice warlocks? Uh, where's your pointy hat, anyway? I thought all witches had pointy hats. Where did you buy your broom? I babbled on. Cackle stared at me in stony silence. Luckily, Boyles had something to say to the witch, too. He bowed before her. Um, your most excellent witchness. Do you remember me? I'm Boyles, uh, the chameleon, he said. I'm just a poor little boil covered chameleon. But I've been working hard for you. I was the one who brought Blossom your poisoned rose. And, and I made sure she fell into a deep sleep along with all the fairies in the kingdom. I did a good job, didn't I? And you promised to reward me with a thousand cupcakes and cookies, candies, and other treats. Cackle blinked. Then she snorted. <laughs> then she broke out in a peal of giggles. <laughs> a thousand cupcakes, huh? Boyles nodded, licking his lips. Then the witch let out a long, evil cackle. She picked Boyles up by his tail and twirled him over her head. You little fool, don't you know anything? A witch never keeps a promise. You'll get nothing from me. She flung Boyles straight up into the air, and he landed with a plop. <laughs> then he slunk into the bushes. All the witches laughed. <laughs> then they started singing in deep, scary voices. Ghosts and goblins, bats and bones, spiders spinning, webby homes. We are creatures of the night we will fill your hearts with fright at that very moment the sun popped up over the horizon the witches and the trolls were blinded by its light they ran off shrieking the trolls took shelter in their dark underground tunnels the witches jumped on their broomsticks and headed for the dark trees as she flew, Cackle waved her fist at me. Beware, Geronimo of Stilton. One day, I'll be back to make soup from your bones. 
she screeched. Ugh. Horrid shook his club at me. I'll be watching you, mousy knight, he growled. Just when you think you're safe, I'll find you, and then I'll tur turn you into a furry sandwich. Now, normally, I would have run away squeaking like a scaredy mouse, but this time I stood my ground. I guess I was tired of running. I was tired of being afraid. Just try it, I cried in my bravest voice. No one pushes Geronimo Stilton around. Huh. I was amazed by what I just said. I had become brave, just like a real knight. Just then, I looked up at the sky and saw what I thought was a sentence written in Fantasian. Hmm. We took off after the last witch disappeared in the sky. I was feeling strong. I was feeling tough. Long live the Order of the Fairy Queen! I shouted happily. Then I heard a voice. I turned around and spotted Boils. I'm sick of working for those stinky trolls, he muttered to himself. And forget Cackle. She used me like a toothpick and threw me away. Suddenly, the chameleon grabbed my paw. How about I work for you, your knightliness? He asked. I could lead you to the queen of the fairies. Uh, for a small fee, of course. I narrowed my eyes. What kind of fee? I asked suspiciously. Boyle's eyes gleamed. Well, I'd love to try that bar of chocolate you have in your backpack, he said. I wasn't surprised that he liked to snoop. Of course he knew I had chocolate. Okay, the candy is yours if you take us to Queen Blossom, I said. With Boyle's leading us, we soon arrived at the royal palace of the fairies. It was called Crystal Castle, and it was surrounded by thick green fog. How would we get inside? Luckily, Boyles already had a plan. The last time he had come to the castle, he'd left a trail of candy behind him. Thirteen pieces of green candy, to be exact. We'll just follow them until we reach the castle, he said. And so we did. Finally, we reached the main doors of the castle. I gave Boyles the chocolate bar from my backpack. He was so excited. I thought he would shed his skin. I'll never forget you, he cried and then slithered off. The door to Crystal Castle slid open without a sound. I took a deep breath. This was it. This is what we'd been waiting for. We were about to meet the Queen of the Fairies. It was the moment of truth. The big ending. The final squeak. We climbed up a crystal staircase until we reached a sparkling crystal hall. In the center was a glittering crystal bed. The Queen of the Fairies lie on the bed. Her head rested on a crystal pillow. She was in a deep sleep. She was very, very beautiful. But there was something strange about her face. She looked both young and centuries old at the same time. Scribblehopper pushed me forward. Go ahead, Rip Sir Geronimo, he said. O only a kiss from a knight in shining armor can wake up Queen Blossom. Only a kiss from a knight? I started to protest, but as usual, no one listened to me. I looked down at my clothes. No, I wasn't dressed in shining armor, but I did have on my best suit. What, was it good enough? But I 
just remembered something my Aunt Sweetford once told me. Clothes don't make a mouse. It's what inside that counts. Oh, man, my heart pounded under my fur as I kissed the sleeping queen's hand. And in a flash, Queen Blossom's eyes popped open. <gasps> Dear night, I knew you would come, she cried, and she wept tears of joy. <gasps> wow. Suddenly, it began to rain. And the rain cleansed the kingdom of the fairies. It washed away the green fog. And all of the fairies throughout the whole kingdom woke up at the same time. And a thousand lights sparkled around us. The rainwater poured down on us. No one seemed to mind. Well, except for the gnomes, who took cover under a flowering tree. Secretly, I was kind of happy to have a shower. Cackle's remark about my stinky fur had me a little concerned. After all, I'm not a sewer rat. When the rain ended, a rainbow lit up the sky. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. It was so amazing. At last, all the colors are in harmony, Queen Blossom said, sighing. And that is the secret of our kingdom, harmony. In the kingdom of the fairies, we all live in peace and we respect one another. Here, the roses have no thorns, and no heart anywhere is filled with bad thoughts. All of the fairies thanked us for saving Queen Blossom. Then they recited the golden rule. Afterwards, Queen Blossom shook my paw. Thanks for saving my kingdom, she said. How can I repay you? I've got gold, I've got silver, I've got an extra pair of fairy wings that would fit you perfectly. <laughs> I grinned. The wings sounded like fun. I could fly to the office instead of taking the subway. I'd be the trendiest rodent on Mouse Island. There was only one problem, though. I wasn't on Mouse Island. I was stuck in the kingdom of fantasy. Actually, your majesty, I told Queen Blossom, all I really want is just to go home. The queen of the fairies nodded. Your wish is my command, she said. I said goodbye to the order of the fairy queen. It wasn't easy. I felt like I had learned a lot from everyone. I hugged the gnomes and told Princess Scatterbrain to brush up on her geography. Then I said goodbye to Trick and thanked Blinkette. I even hugged the giant. Well, I didn't actually hug him. I kind of just wrapped my arms around his shoe. <laughs> Meanwhile, Scribblehopper had burst into tears. I was flattered. I guess he really was going to miss me. I put my paw on the frog's shoulder. Don't cry, I said. I'll be back. But Scribblehopper just shook his head. I, I, I'm not crying because you're leaving, he explained. I, I'm crying because I have a terrible secret to tell you. Scribblehopper poured out his whole story. It seemed the frog had a daughter. One day, Cackle kidnapped her. The evil queen turned the young frog into a bird, a red phoenix. <gasps> I couldn't believe my ears. The red phoenix was actually Scribblehopper's daughter. Well, why didn't you say so before, I asked. Then I patted the frog's back. It's okay, I assured him. I, 
Geronimo Stilton will be back to free your daughter. Scribblehopper grinned and blew his nose in my tie. <laughs> Rats. What would the cute mouse down at the dry cleaner think? Fair night. I have one more favor to ask you, the toad sniffed. Uh-oh. I chewed my whiskers. What next? Had Scribblehopper's mother been turned into a bat? Was his brother really an ox? Luckily, it wasn't that kind of favor. The frog just wanted me to write a book about our adventures. I realized I'm not such a great writer. I just like using this feather pen, he admitted. He stared at the pen with a smile. I stared at the pen, too. It was nice. Maybe I should ask Santa Mouse for a pen just like it for Christmas. After all, every author should have at least one nice writing instrument. I was still thinking about the pen when a dragon landed right beside me. Holy jeez, that was one big dragon. It had gold scales and a long, long neck. Dragon of the Rainbow, take the knight to the real world, Queen Blossom ordered. The dragon knelt down so that I could climb onto its back. The Dragon of the Rainbow has really precious golden scales and seven horns the color of the rainbow. Its nostrils breathe out the scent of roses, and its cry sounds like the tinkling of a thousand golden bells. Its golden den appears at the foot of the rainbow. It is nourished by pure happiness. It adores classical music and is loyal to Queen Blossom. It has the strength of a thousand dragons, but to subdue it, the only thing one needs to do is scratch its ears. Then it purrs contentedly. After I climbed up, the dragon took off, flapping its mighty wings. It let out a cry that sounded like a thousand tinkling bells. I held on tightly to the dragon's neck. We flew high into the sky. I was afraid to look down. But when I did, I saw the most amazing sight. The seven kingdoms of fantasy spread out below us like a colorful blanket. It reminded me of my great aunt Ratsy's comfy, cozy comforter. It was so soft and warm. <sighs> I yawned. Hmm. I was beginning to feel sleepy. So very sleepy. Huh. I woke up in my dusty attic. Ugh, my head was spinning. What's going on? I mumbled as I rubbed my eyes. I looked up at the window. The sun was shining. I looked at my watch. Holy cheese! Time sure had flown. It was morning. Just then. I noticed the music box in my paws. I lifted the lid. A sweet melody filled the air. And what was that smell? Ah, yes, the smell of roses. That was the scent of the fairies. <sighs> but the golden key was gone, and so was the scroll. Suddenly, I remembered the firebrand the king of the dragons had seared into my paw. I held up my paw. Huh. No mark. No cinched fur. It was gone. Hmm. Was I feverish? Was I crazy? Was I headed for Dr. Shrinkfur's couch? Or had it all been a dream? Oh, well, maybe I'd never know. But there was one thing I did know. I just had to write a book about the kingdom of fantasy. I hung a sign outside my front door. It read, Mouse working, please do not disturb. Signed, Geronimo Stilton. I locked the door, I shut the shutters, and I took the phone off the hook. 
Then I sent a message to the Rhone Gazette. Please do not squeak to me for three months, it said. P.S. Yes, that's three whole months. P.P.S. Yes, that's 90 days. Uh, uh, P.P.P.S. Uh, yes, I know, that's a really long time. I turned on my computer and started to write. I wrote without stopping. I didn't sleep. I didn't eat. I didn't drink. Uh, well, okay, maybe I did drink a few mozzarella milkshakes. And maybe I munched on a few cheese pizzas and nibbled on a few dozen cheddar melts. Uh, well, to keep me going, of course, but that was it. At last, the book was finished. I unlocked my door and ran straight to the Rodents Gazette and burst into the office. I've written a new book. I announced. Everyone crowded around me, curious. What's it about? What's it called? When can we read it? They asked. I grinned. Oh, how I love my fans. It's about a wonderful place called the Kingdom of Fantasy, I explained. It's a magical place with lots of strange creatures like dragons and unicorns and witches and trolls. I started to tell them about each kingdom, but it wasn't easy. I mean, how do you describe the song of the mermaids or the sweet smell of flowers in the kingdom of the fairies? My cousin Trap perked up when I talked about the stinky trolls. They sound like my kind of guys. I always say baths are overrated, he chuckled. He waved one of his smelly socks under my snout. Hey, cousin Kins, do trolls smell like dirty socks? This is one of my favorites. I haven't washed it for a whole year. Phew, wee, ugh. I tried not to gag. Have I ever told you my cousin is the most annoying mouse on the entire planet? Benjamin tugged on my sleeve. Then he handed me a rose. Tell me again about the kingdom of the fairies, uncle. Did it smell like this flower? he asked. Actually, it did, I told him. We printed lots and lots of copies of my new book. It became an instant bestseller. I was so inspired by my adventure that I even wrote a few songs about it. I asked some of my friends to help me. Then we went to a recording studio and sang the songs. There was Cackle's Evil Cackle, Swimming with Mermaids, and There's No Gnome Like My Gnome. I made a CD for everyone and gave them out as early Christmas presents. They were a really big hit. The next day, I invited Benjamin and all of his classmates at the Little Tales Academy over to my house. I sat in my favorite armchair and everyone crowded around me. Then I opened up the book and began to read. It took me a while to read the whole book. There were lots of questions like, what makes a giant a giant? And how do dragons breathe with all that fire in their mouths? And if we had wings, could we fly like the fairies? The last question made me think about Queen Blossom. Maybe I should have taken those fairy wings. I would have been a real hit at Benjamin's school. Still, I'm not crazy about all of that wind blowing through my fur. I don't even like driving in a convertible with a top down. And what do you do if it rains? It would be kind of hard to carry an umbrella in your paw and fly at the same time. I was still thinking about the rain when I heard a clap of thunder. I looked outside. Oh man, it was pouring. A few minutes later, it stopped. The sun peeked out of the clouds and a beautiful rainbow lit up the sky. Let's go puddle jumping, my nephew suggested. I followed Benjamin and his friends out the door. They laughed and splashed in the puddles. Above our heads, the rainbow shone brightly. 
It reminded me of the kingdom of fantasy and my amazing adventures there. A rainbow is a symbol of peace, Queen Blossom had said. I smiled. I felt so calm. I felt so relaxed. And I felt absolutely peaceful. Then I got hit with a wave of water. It dripped down my snout and off my whiskers. Oh well, so much for that peaceful feeling. What did I do next? I decided to join in the fun. I ran inside and came back out wearing a raincoat and boots. After all, I was wearing my favorite suit. The end.